In order to support our show, we need the help of some great advertisers. And we want to make sure those advertisers are the ones you'll actually want to hear about. But we need to learn a little more about you to make that possible. So go to podsurvey.com slash Tamar and take a quick anonymous survey that will help us get to know you better. That way we can bring you advertisers you won't want to skip. Once you've completed the quick survey, you can enter for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that's podsurvey.com slash Tamar. And thank you for your help. I'm Portia Williams, and I brought my mom, Miss Diane. Hey, hey. And my sister, Lauren. Hey, (laughs) y'all. On my new podcast, Portia For Real. And we're taking some of your calls, giving you, the listeners, some advice on whatever you got going on in your life. One thing for sure, two things for certain. If you listen to us, you'll be crying or laughing. (laughs) Or both. (laughs) Both, both. Both, Both, okay. (laughs) Portia For Real is out now. Listen in Stitcher. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. When it comes to love, there's no easy formula to building a sustainable relationship. Today's guest shares her unapologetic truth to building a love worth fighting for. Every sector of our lives is pretty much much under construction. Family, under construction. Career, under construction. Relationships, under construction. Emotions, I know mine live under construction. Finances, under construction. We might as well be under construction together. Welcome to another week of Under Construction with your girl, Tamar Braxton. Look, y'all, I am so hyped about today's episode because we have a very special guest who has earned her title as the queen of comedy. Y'all, she's a host, an actress, a celebrity mom to many of us. Everybody, she's Monique, and I'll be speaking with her later today on The Blueprint. I know most of us can't wait for 2020 to come to an end, but I don't know what the hell 2021 going to bring, so I'm going to tread lightly when I say that. And I know we've all been through so much this year, and I get it, and we literally had about 75 hours of normalcy, okay? From March 15th forward, it's been like hibernation, quarantination. Or however you want to say, we all have been stuck in the house. And this shit has been crazy. On top of COVID, we all had to deal with like blatant racial injustices. We done lost Kobe. Everybody done broke up this year, child. The divorce rates is out of control. The parents is teachers now, including me. And I I can literally go on and on and on because it's just been like thing after thing after thing, right? <sighs> but however, there's something powerful in knowing that you and I are still standing. How about that? All right, everybody. It's time for me to give my take on end of the year goal setting. Okay, so before we race into 2021, let's just go ahead on and close out 2020 with some wins, okay? Here are my suggestions for intentional goal setting. Okay, the first thing I do to set goals is I have to make it real. So that means I have to say it out of my mouth and write it down on a piece of paper. Setting goals is for real being honest with yourself. Now, if you are a persistent person and you know that it's not going to take you long to set your goals, you know that you're like, okay, I, seven days, okay? That's the kind of person I am. Or maybe you are 30 day. Or maybe it take you the whole year, you know? You got to be real with yourself and you got to give yourself a chance to actually be realistic about hitting your goals. So. Please don't write down on a piece of paper that you want to lose 20 pounds in seven days. That's not going to work, okay? Make sure that you're giving yourself the allotted amount of time that it's going to take to realistically hit your goals. Just remember, everybody, you don't have to wait until the new year to set your resolutions. You can start today. This is Tamar Takes. I'm going to keep it a thou thou. Baby, it is all me. 
All right, everybody, this segment is so important to me because it gives us an opportunity to really, really connect. You get to ask me your most pressing questions. I get to share my thoughts and opinions. And uh, look at God, a win-win for everybody. See how he used us? All right, now let's click on this box and see what questions y'all have for y'all girl Tay-Tay today. Hey, Tamar. I am one of your Tay Martian fans. And let's just say I'm craving some new music. So what's up? When's the next single or album coming? Let your girl know. Oh, girl, I don't know. I'm working on that thing, okay? <laughs> um, and I'm really excited about the music that I am putting out. And yeah, it's going to be fine. Like, ain't no date, boo. But it's coming. All right, question number two. Miss Tamar, I'm a college student and I'm having a hard time staying motivated. I recently broke up with my boyfriend. Campus life sucks because of COVID. And I'm just really having a hard time staying focused. Do you have any advice? Now, girl, I know you're not asking me for no boyfriend advice. (laughs) Since I am the last person you want to ask. (laughs) Girl, I can't give you advice on that. Um, But... You just got to stay positive, sis, because, like, COVID has beat everybody's ass. All of us has lost to COVID. And everything has changed. Um, Life at school has changed. Life at home has changed. Um, It's something in the air with COVID because everybody's relationship has turned to hell, you know, and... You know, you just got to stay positive. It's hard for everybody to stay focused. But, you know, what if this is our new normal? What are you going to do? Stay down? Stay depressed? No, you got to work through it and you got to see the positive in it. You just got to keep it moving. And that's that on that. Well, up next, we're entering the blueprint with actress, comedian and trailblazer Monique. You don't want to miss our conversation, y'all. So stay with us. This This is the blueprint. Come on, y'all. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. I told y'all that the blueprint is all about learning, living, and growing as individuals. And what better guest to share her story with us than someone as highly decorated, beautiful, and amazing as Monique Hicks. Better known as the queen of comedy. AKA Miss Monique. Her award winning talents extends across television, film, stand up comedy, and literature. And let's just say she's a veteran in this entertainment game. One of my favorites. Plus, boys and girls, she hails from the Be More Like Me. <laughs> Everybody, welcome, welcome, Monique Hicks, to. Under construction. Thank you so much for coming. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> hey, baby. Hi. Thanks for well, having me, sis. Oh, my goodness. So I just wanted you to know that you were on my personal list of people for me to have on the show, for me to interview. Only because, you know, I'm all about transformation and growing. And from Death Comedy Jam to the Parkers to the iconic Monique show, to this vegan, get your health together role model. See, it's the growth for me. (laughs) It's the growth for me. Oh my God. Like, do you remember when you first came on the scene with the Gangsta Lean? Like, can you tell me who was Monique then? Oh my God, baby. Yeah, Um, I know. (laughs) When I first got to Hollywood, Tamar, I was so green and I was so vulnerable and I was so open and I was so excited. And it was, it was this little girl truly walking in her dream before Mm -hmm. I even, before I got the Parkers, you know, so I was this girl from Baltimore. I was, um, rough on all edges. Yeah. <laughs> I was tough at every cut. Yeah. <laughs> I had no filter, no kind of way. So when I first got there, I was very I was a very different Monique than I am today. I'll say that. Very different. Yes, you are. Oh my gosh. What do you think made you turn from this amazing comic to this iconic actress? Was that something that you always were when you came to Hollywood an actress? Were you a comic first? Tamar, okay, 
Okay, what y'all call it? The shade or the tea? What that baby's call it? I'm going to spill some tea or something? The tea, the tea. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to spill the tea. Okay, yes, shit, yes. I'm trying to keep up with the young folk. Yes, because it ain't no tea. shade here. We have shade okay. anonymous, no more. <laughs> I'm spilling the tea, baby. All of okay, it, please, so please. When I first got to a place called Hollywood, I never went there to be an actress. Wow. I went to Hollywood to be a talk show host. I never went to be an actress. And when I went in to have a meeting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't go into the meeting first. The woman at the time who was my agent had a meeting with a man named Larry Little at Big Ticket Television for another client. She put that client's tape in. He said, no, thank you. She said, (laughs) oh, well, I have someone else. She put in my talk show tape. He said, I'm not interested in a talk show, but if she can act, she can have her own show. Wow. Well, I get a call. I get a call from my agent. She's like, listen, I need you down here on this set. I go down on that set. I talk to this man named Larry Little. In walks this baby Countess Vaughn. And two or three hours later, I have a show called The Parkers. Let me tell you something. I have never, ever, ever heard that story. You know, because first of all, you're a hometown girl. And everybody who is like from Baltimore, I feel like we all kind of watch each other, right? And I've yes, never, ever yes. heard that story. That is amazing. And you know what? That just goes to tell you what is for you is for you. See, God had it's that for, for you. Yes, ma'am. Just for you. So let me ask you a question because I know that your husband um, and you work close together, right? He's your manager, yes. correct? Mm-hmm. Now, how that work? Because that did not work for me. How are y'all even able to separate the two? Well, let me say this. We've been best friends since we were 14 years old. Okay. From 10th grade. So there are conversations that he and I can have that no one else could have that conversation with me. And I've had quite a few sisters say, how does that work? I had to get my ego out the way. I had to get my ego out of the way. And I had to understand the friend that he was. Mm -hmm. I had to understand the business person that he was. And I also had to understand he has our best interests. Not, I got a manager, that manager go home to his family and his wife. And in the middle of the night, if I'm crying, he ain't going to come rub my back. Facts. So when people say, how does it work? It works because for me, I had to get me out of the way, Tamar. I had to let go of my guard. Now, I was Mm -hmm. guarded for reasons that people would say, bitch, I understand why you would be guarded. Okay, (laughs) please hear me. I mean, I was always ready. Like, if you look like you great swing, I'm going to get two off before you get one off. Period. Period. (laughs) Okay. I got it. (laughs) Okay. I got it. So it works because I trust him mm-hmm. and he trusts me. Mm-hmm. I trust him too. When he's on that phone and he's taking care of that business, I trust that. Yeah. And he trusts when I get out there and do what I'm supposed to do. He trusts that. So we trust each mm-hmm. other and we're unafraid to say what we need to hear. Yeah. And not what we want to hear. Yeah. Well, you know, I think for me, um, being married to my manager, and I get all of that because nobody's going to have your back like like your man, period, mm-hmm. especially when he loves you, right, mm-hmm. and wants to see you win. I get all of that. I just couldn't separate when it was time to be married and when it was time to work. And I think that bringing my work in my bedroom was too much for me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because everything stemmed from, like, my mood was stemmed from my work. You know what I mean? And I didn't know how to separate that. Or if he didn't communicate something to me, it would cause a fight and we could never separate what is marriage and what is work. How do y'all do that? What is the secret? Y'all have the secret sauce now. Well, let me say this to you, baby. It took some time. Okay. But what he did say to me was, I'm going to wait for you to come through it. I'm going to, oh, girl. Oh, that's good. I'm going to wait for you to come through it because it is rough. It is hard. And he would always say to me, do you want to go up the rough side of the mountain or the smooth side of the mountain? Because if you go up the smooth side, God damn it, when it get rough, there's nothing to grab onto when you're coming down. We're taught so quick to quit. We're taught so quick to give up and give in. And I remember coming up. 
watching my mother and father. And my parents stayed married till they died. Did you hear me? But they stayed in prison till they died. Yeah. They stayed locked up with each other till they left here, baby. And I watched it. And I watched every woman in my family be miserable and bitter. I watched it. And I remember seeing Janet Dufois on the red carpet. That's Walona from Good Times. Yeah, I know who that is. Okay. Yes, for your listeners, for y'all okay, young listeners. Okay, this, this for the young tenders out <laughs> yes. there right now. That woman walked up to me and my husband. She looked me up and down. Then she looked at my husband. She said, I can always tell when a woman is being taken care of. And you taking care of that baby. And then she kept walking. Ain't nothing nobody can say to me because that was Walona's ass saying yeah, that to yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, I may be yeah. alone, but I ain't lonely. So, yeah. so <clears throat> I was, I was hoping and 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 saying, sis, ho- hold on, because it was when I tell you in the beginning, baby, about them first five years, I wasn't yeah. no joke. <laughs> I was no joke. Do you hear me, sugar? <laughs> okay, I let do. me tell you, I was no I joke. And he just kept nurturing me. Mm-hmm. And he kept showing me a patience that I had never seen before. So when, when you say, Monique, how does it work? I believe in him. And I trust him. And he saved my life. Yeah. I don't give a damn if we talking about business at two o'clock in the morning. If we talking yeah. about the generations we'll never meet at three o'clock in the morning, I don't, I don't care because it all go together. Yeah, I don't I don't look at it like that. And when my mood is crazy, because I can get a little crazy. Yeah, we all can. We all okay. can get a little crazy. Here, say, come <laughs> on. What, what you need right now? What's what's going on with you right now? So, I say to us. When you can fight for it, fight for it. Because if you keep wanting it to be easy, guess what? You'll be in relationship after relationship after relationship. I know I put my hand up. That's my third husband, you know, and I had quite a few fellows in between, but no judgment. So, okay, no judgment. okay. We're all looking for happiness. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> We're all trying to Come find on, it. Come on, baby. <laughs> we are trying to find it. Yes. But what I had to realize was, I had it. Yeah. I had it, but I just had to allow someone to unlock it. Yeah. When I tell you me and my mother, Tamar, we went through a tug of war till she left this earth. We never fixed it. I watched my mother become envious. I watched my mother become jealous. And this is a man my mother's been knowing since I was a child, but I watched it. And then she said to me one day, you know what, Nikki, you've given Sydney all the power. And I said, mommy, what you're seeing me give Sydney is called respect. Mm. And that's something that you and my father couldn't come to grips with. So it's not me giving him power. It's me showing this man respect because he's respected me too. So That's why when I say, sister, when it's real, and only you know that. Yeah. Only you know that pillow talk. Only you know when wasn't nobody there to wipe your ass, when you could not wipe it yourself, and that man said, I got you. Only you know that. And then I had to learn how to reciprocate Mm because I thought it was just all about give it to me, fix me, help me, heal me, make me. Wait a minute. One time. (laughs) That's why I tell you, say, Mom, I was wild as shit for the first five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. I remember one time um, I had asked him to go get me some water. Just something just this simple, right? Yeah. To go get me some water. No problem. He go downstairs, get the water, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's say about three nights later, he want me to go get him something. I was like, can't make I can't, it. <laughs> right. What is the, what's, the, what's happening? <laughs> Don't you know? Don't you know? And he said to me, so let me ask you something. Do you think in this relationship that I'm only supposed to do for you? Well, ain't nobody ever said that to me, Tamar. So that's the same thing I did to my head, too, and my shoulders. I had to sit back and get my ego in check and said, I never considered that. So when people say, Monique, what you doing different? 
I'm being considerate. And I'm, I'm trying to be as patient as I can because somebody is showing me patience when I don't deserve it. Ooh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Because sometimes, you know, um, we feel like we don't deserve that, you know, because of things that we have seen our parents go through. And I know you mentioned that. And then some things that we've been through in relationships. So when people show us that kind of compassion, that is something that we are not used to. So we can't notice that and call it. We can't give it a name, you know, because we've never seen that before. And, you know, I, oh, I'm getting chills about Mr. Sydney because it takes an, an amazing man, an amazing person to have that kind of love and patience. To tell Let you about yourself so you can get it. Not to tell you about yourself, just to tell you about yourself. Because some of these guys out here do that shit, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about tell you about yourself so you can understand it. So I can love you the way that I'm so, oh, I can love you the way I'm supposed to love you because you've given that back to me. Oh, that's so good. You know what he said to me one day? What did he say to you one day? Oh, I love Girl, him. <laughs> let me tell you something. I get it. So this is in the this is this first five years. That's uh -huh. why I was saying, take my bitch, hold on. And we're gonna talk about that part later, but I'm gonna listen to your story. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> we pull up somewhere, right? Uh -huh. And I'm getting ready to get out my I'm getting ready to get out the car. And he came around to my side of the door and he said, Could you please let me treat you like a lady? Well, Tamar. I didn't know what to say to that. And this is my best friend. This is my best friend from 10th grade. I didn't know what to say to that. I didn't know how to respond to that. And when people say to me, why do you call him daddy? <laughs> God. Okay, go ahead. Why, why you call him daddy, mommy? And I tell him, because he's raising me. Oof. He's giving me everything that my father did not. And when I tell you sometime, it can be so goddamn embarrassing. And it's just me and him in the room. See, there ain't nobody else in the room. And he's had to say some things to me, Tamar, that has taken me to my knees. Mm -hmm. And then he'll pick me back up. And he'll say, is anything I'm saying to you not true? And I'll say Everything you saying to me is true. But right now, nigga, my ego, I need you to walk away because the, the crazy bitch inside of me, she can really say something and, yeah, yeah. and mess up the moment. I know she coming. <laughs> Here she come. She can really come out the basement. Yeah, yeah. And then he loved all of us through it. He loved all of us through it. So when I say to black women, Y'all, please, if you have a good one, let your guard down and let it happen. And you're going to hear some shit that's all shocking. Because when you got a king, he's got to prepare you to be the queen. Yeah. And so many of us ain't got the queen training. So when we get the king, we don't know what to do with this shit. We don't know. Because now we think you're trying to boss me. Nigga, you're trying yeah. to boss me. Or no. you know what it is for me? It's the other people who put the label on your relationship. Like, and then oh, we let he's him. controlling because he's protecting you. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, yes. it's those things like that. Or um, you you call him a king, so he must be dominant. You can't yes. call you can't call your man daddy now. You know what I'm yes. saying? Or you're less than a woman, so you don't yes. recognize that your man really is, like you said, help raising you yes. to be the best that you can be. And I won't back down from that. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so good. But we got to take a quick pause for some ads. We'll be right back. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well easy and affordable with plans to fit every kind of lifestyle. With Green Chef, it's easy to eat well and discover new recipes every week that you'll love to cook. Their expert chefs designed flavorful recipes for your lifestyle with plenty of options to choose from each week. Green Chef lets you choose from a wide array of easy-to-follow recipes, perfect for keto, paleo, and plant-powered diets, or even if you just want to eat healthier. And everything is hand-picked and delivered right to your door. Ingredients come pre-measured, 
perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped, and their recipes are quick and easy with step-by-step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you along the way. Green Chef is also the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. And they offer contactless delivery to your doorstep for easy home cooking. My experience with Green Chef was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun cooking with my son for a healthier dinner option. Go to GreenChef.com and use code Tamar90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. That's GreenChef.com and code Tamar90 for $90 off, including free shipping. Welcome back, everybody, to Under Construction with our very special guest, Monique. I'm going to say a lot of people only talk about, you know, the failures or the problems that you have together as a couple. I don't even want to talk about that. I want to talk about y'all wins together and what does that mean and and how did that come about? When it was time to negotiate the BET deal for the Mm -hmm. Monique show, Mm -hmm. right? Tamar, now here come the dream. Here it come from me watching that woman, Oprah Winfrey, when people are talking. Now here it comes. They get ready to call my name. The doors get ready to open. Oh, my God. And they came back with this number. Now, that was the biggest number I had ever seen in my career. Okay? And my husband looked at me and said, no. And I said, excuse me? (laughs) Okay? What you say? He said, no. I said, what do you mean? No, he said, because you're going to be mad if we sign up for that right now. I was like, daddy, but he said, listen, I need you to walk away. Okay. They came back. I came back. I said, that, 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 that is good. Let's go. He said, no, ma'am. He said, you have told me that you know your worth. Now it's time to put it on the table. When I tell you my husband, along with our attorney, negotiated the largest deal in the history of BET for that time slot, in the history of that network, when you want to talk about wins, you talk about two people that sat next to each other in the 10th grade when they were 14 years old and we stood up on the balcony and he said, I said, one day we're going to be stars. He said, you first. Oh. You're 14. When you talk about wins, when you talk about wins, we have two Little babies together and they tell us in the hospital they don't know what the outcome going to be because they come in too early and they telling us all the shit that can be wrong. And that man whispered in my ear and said, I don't care what it is. They ours. You want to talk to me about some wins? When I was at my weakest point, he loved me like I was at my strongest. So when you want to talk about wins, Oftentimes, they're the wins that people never get a chance to see. I don't give a damn about the bells and whistles. I'm talking about the wins when he set me down and said, Mama, if you don't go get some help, Mm. if you do not go get some help, you're going to be a problem for this family. And I had to take my ass in there and sit on that sofa and say some shit out loud that I thought I was going to take to my grave. So when you're talking about some wins, to be 15 years in, and I'm in love with this man like I'm 15 days in. Wow. If I can get pregnant, Tamar, I swear to God, I'll be pregnant all over my body. I'll be pregnant all over. Do you hear me, baby girl? Yes, I would have quadruplets at one time everywhere. I do. Yeah. I do. So I do. to talk about the wins, and when I first had to come out and say what I had to say. That man took me by my hands and said, hey, we're going to be okay. Because I'm not going to lie to you. Did my knees buckle? Yes. I know what I'm going up against. When I had to come out and say what I had to say about Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry and Lee Daniels and Lionsgate, did my knees buckle? Yes, because I know what I'm going up against. But that man took me by the hands and said, mama, the truth will always surface. We right here. So when you want to talk to me about wins, 
and with this whole Netflix situation, and we're still in the midst of it. We're still in the midst of it. So we don't know what the outcome will be. But for that man to stand right there by my side, baby, winning. What they say, winning. Winning. <laughs> oh, my winning. gosh. Like, so, like, on so many levels. I don't think that until now people saw you and I have to call him Mr. Sydney because I have so much respect for him as a man right mm. now, you know? Like, I don't think they saw the two of you as this kind of deep love story. You know, this is the love that everybody wants and dreams of. I know that's the kind of love that I want, you know? Mm. I hate being single. I don't know what happened <laughs> to my fairy tale or my plan along the way. Like what kind of, and I'm in my forties, I'm 43. What kind of advice would you give somebody like me who is looking for love and really trying to figure out, you know, who they are and where they fit in this whole relationship game? I even hate dating. I, mm. I, Cause I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. What, what we, what we doing? You know, I don't even know. You know, I, I've never been a person to say, let me give you advice. Yeah. I can only tell you what worked for me. Right. Well, I had something to, worked for you. I want to know what worked for you. You're the blueprint right now. Okay. I got out of my way. And Ooh. I had to be unafraid to hear the truth. I had to be unafraid to hear it and sit in it. I had to be unafraid to say, I'm sorry. And let me tell you what I'm sorry for. Because I was a punk apologizer. Well, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. I had to say, hey, Tamar, I'm sorry. And I want to tell you why I'm sorry. I'm sorry because remember that day I came to your dressing room and I just barged in, bitch, and I did not. And you was in there and you were undressed. And I just walked. I want to pop. I'm just using that because you're looking like, bitch, when you do that. But I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we don't apologize fully. Yeah, yeah, properly. So I had with accountability. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. That's 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 what it was. It was just taking accountability and being vulnerable right down to the point. This is how I feel. Yeah. You know, so it's just being open and and open to love and be loved. Yeah. Loving back. It ain't just about you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially us when we entertain us. God damn it. Sometimes I, <laughs> sometime I be around mother, just hen parties. Well, it's a, and I'm like, listen, just because you can sing, just because you funny, just because you can strip, just because you, I don't give a goddamn, a man still want a woman Yeah. when he got yeah. his woman. Not all that other shit. No. I'm like, listen, y'all, we got to learn how to take care of home as we want. We'll say a man got to bring all this to the table. Well, what you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the table? And then when you can say, well, you know what, bitch, right now I ain't bringing nothing to the table but some problems and some um, raggedy ass clothes. <laughs> and then, you know, you're on your way. I feel like I've had men who really love me the way that you're talking about. But I think the first time I was way too young and the second time I just, I didn't have the help that I'm getting now. Mm -hmm. So... What if you're the woman and you say, you know what? I fucked up. I'm sorry. I, you know, I did way too much and I hurt you and I, I didn't consider you and mm -hmm. things like that. Do you believe that um, it's an expiration date on a relationship? Do you believe that sometimes you find out that it's you too late? Oh, yeah. I mean, I believe that I believe you can find out too late, but I believe you can also find out right on time. On. You know, it. it, it there's no... There's no formula to it. And the only way you find out is when you say, hey, I messed up. Yeah. And let me tell you how I messed up. And if there's any chance of you and I, I would like to show you in my actions who I'm trying to become. What you say? Then they might say, get your crazy ass <laughs> on out of here. You done messed my car up, bitch. You done called my mother out of name. My children don't like you, bitch. It is too late. Yeah. And then he might say, you know what? I was just waiting for you. Wow. You don't know until you try. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how much therapy did it take you to get to this place? Because I'm just finding <laughs> that out. <laughs> After extensive three 
and a half months of therapy every single day. Now, how much therapy did it take you to get to this space? And how how important do you think therapy is in a relationship? I went to therapy for years. Mm -hmm. A sister named Dr. Wanzo. Mm -hmm. And she's incredible. Yeah. And I say her name because we'll tell somebody about some red bottoms, but we won't tell somebody that can get our mind together. Oh, come her on, name somebody. Is Dr. Cassandra come Wanzo. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. It's like I had to look through rocks under a creek to find no, my baby. doctor. This sister right here. And what made me love her, she would just ask me questions. Mm -hmm. And then I got to answering the questions. <laughs> I said, well, shit, I know the answers. Give me back my money because I have healed my damn self. But what was so beautiful was everything she would say to me, Sydney would say to me before I went. Yeah. He said, but I need you to go to somebody who don't have a dog in the fight. Yeah. You don't so, want to hear from him. Right. At the time, I couldn't. It but now yeah. I crave it. Now I, I, I so appreciate those four o'clock in the morning conversations when it's just like he can feel my energy and it's like hey what's happening I, I I so crave it now because I trust I trust the source I trust who I'm saying it to and I trust who's feeding my soul yeah because you had to get there through therapy and I you said you went for years until you figured it out yes Therapy is not something that I might mm -hmm. have to go next week. Yeah. I might have to say, you know what, baby, uh, Dr. Wanzo, what you doing at two o'clock uh, Tuesday? Because I'm, a, who knows? So I, it's open. It's not something that you seal off or you close. It's open because I'm a junkie to toxicity. I grew up in that. I grew up in such a toxic environment that I can still be a junkie to it. So I, I fight. I fight. Fight not to go there. I fight mm. not to let my mind get to being simple and crazy. I fight for it. So when my son say to me now at 15, mommy, you good? I can tell they, they, they caught me thinking something because it's like, yeah, yeah. I fight for that. So that's yeah. not something that I'm saying, oh, no, where I went for 10 years and stop. Uh uh. It's if it's something, yeah, it's ongoing, and and so proud of it. Not no embarrassment, no shame, no. Because again, I watched my mother die in misery. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want something different. So if we want something different, Tamar, we got to do something different. Yeah, you do, you do. And then I, I got think. sons. Don't bring yeah. no crazy. Don't you bring no crazy girls home. Don't listen here. Listen here. And yeah. I told my sons already, I said, I want to apologize right now for mommy's behavior. <laughs> okay. I already told them I want to apologize for my behavior because yeah. I already know. I, and yeah. I told, it's just so funny because my son's 17. I said, you know, I said, you might find you a diamond in the rough. And she may be really rough on the edges. And she might be rough all the way around, but she, when you work through it, you're going to have you a diamond in the end. Yeah. I said, because that's what your daddy had to do with me. Mm. So don't don't give up on the rough and tough ones. Sometimes I just need somebody to love them. Since I've been getting therapy that I've been bringing my toxic book bag with me everywhere I went. You know, from seeing certain things, from being a part of certain things when I was younger and then working in a toxic work environment. I feel like it destroyed my family, destroyed every single relationship, you know, that, you know, I've been a part of. And all I knew was how to live in an, in an toxic environment. I didn't know what it was like to be regular. <laughs> you know, until now, I don't know what it was like to to be in the house or a relationship without arguing, without accusing each other of stuff, you know, without looking at each other sideways, without snickering, snarling behind each other back and being halfway in and halfway out. I had absolutely no idea. And I have to say, it's so beautiful on the other side, especially when you can recognize it and see like, oh, my God, I so don't deserve to live in toxic, it stinks, doesn't it yes, smell? And it it's does. foggy. And it's so clear when you, you know, make the decision to live in a clear, stress-free environment. It's like the, it's like the heavens open up. 
Yes. You know what I mean? It's so yes. beautiful and so amazing. And I think that now, because you have done the work for so many years, um, we look to you to pivot. You become the pivot queen. You will change a negative situation. Even when people are talking greasy to you in an interview and they're trying you because I've seen it. You will pivot that thing <laughs> into such a beautiful positive sunshine and outlook. How? How do you do that? I'm being nurtured. And when I was that person that couldn't see the bright side, Sidney was that man that said, let's talk about it. Mm. And he would always take me to that place of, listen, every day can be beautiful if you allow it. So I began to believe that. So I like the word pivot, and it's not that I'm trying to pivot, but it's like, y'all, listen, we don't have to stay in this. That's why when people say, you know, Monique, how does it feel when people didn't stand behind you or didn't stand with you? Or, and I'm grateful for the ones that did and that, that, that are doing it. I couldn't take it personal for as personal as I wanted to take it. Yeah. My husband said, Mama, you ain't that special for it just to be about you. So when you know the history and you know the history of Hattie McDaniel, you know the history of Eartha Kitt and you know mm -hmm. the history of Esther Scott and you know the history of, of Louise Beavers and you know the history of these amazing women who said, this ain't right. You don't read the stories of all the sisters that stood with them. Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't. I just haven't read those stories. The facts. The you don't read the body. stories of all the black men that stood with these women. I'm not saying they didn't. I just don't know about the story. So, again, to say, how do I pivot? Tamar, I refuse to leave this journey fucked up. Period. <laughs> so what do we have next? You know what I always say, Tamar? I hope tomorrow. I hope tomorrow. Because tonight... Um, what's going to be next is I'm going to go on a honeymoon, a brief honeymoon this evening. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, sugar. Okay. Cause when I get to talking about them, it make me feel a kind of way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It make me feel a kind of way oh, in I my spirit. It. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. Yes. Don't be afraid to be in love. God damn it. Yes. I'm talking about that kind of in love. You know what my son said to us? They said, which was, the greatest compliment. They said, you know, if I don't have a marriage like y'all's, I don't want it. Do you know what kind of compliment? Because I would have never said that to my parents. I was like, oh, my babies, like y'all paying attention. Just so, you know, be unafraid to be. In, and I mean, that kind of in love where you don't give a goddamn what nobody got to say. Yeah. If Jesus himself, listen to me now. Jesus, if Jesus came and said he ain't the one, but you know he is, you yeah. say, go get your father. Go get your father. <laughs> go get your father. Because go get you God. Are, you don't know. <laughs> go get God. Go get God. Go get God. Now you married Mary Magdalene, and we know what she was, but you're going to try to judge me. Go get your father. <laughs> Listen. This whole conversation was everything to me. You have no idea what you just poured into, not just me, but everybody who's listening. Like, I thought that it was okay to love who you love as long as that person was showing you that same admiration and respect and gratitude back and mm -hmm. I thought it was okay to still love somebody who calls people controlling and um, they, they want to dominate you. But I thought to myself that, no, that's just the person who's looking out for you. And I'm so glad. Now, there are those that are that. Mm -hmm. But what she's talking about and what I'm talking about is that everlasting, I'm going to stay and fight with you kind of love. Yeah. And I'm telling you... I feel like you spoke to my spirit and I know so many people that are listening spirits that uh, it's out there. You don't have to settle. We can have that. You know, you just got to open your eyes 
and get out of your own way. Sometimes we are the stop sign. Sometimes we are the red light. Sometimes we stop great things from happening in our lives. We just have to hit that go button, open up the door and learn how to receive and respect. And then we receive back and respect back. And that's such a beautiful story, especially for your 15 year old sons to see that my, what a relationship will, will they have now? You could have, you could have passed on what you saw, but instead your choices was to pass on and, an undeniable, beautiful, romantic story. And let me tell you something. Go get God. God. That's what I want, God. <laughs> that's what I want. Go get God. Oh, that's and what I got. Oh, I'm telling you, that like, is my takeaway for today. And I might have to tweet that. Uh, excuse me, go get God. Because I need that love. And, and standing out of your own way is so liberating. Just look, y'all, Monique has been such an amazing and powerful conversation. And I can't believe that we are nearing the end of the show today. But before we close out, we have to leave the people with a little something to add to their under construction toolkit. So now before we close out, y'all, y'all know we got to share our takeaways of the day. And Monique, since you are my guest, I would love for you to lead us in sharing a closing thought. Monique. I want to say this to you, mm-hmm. that I'm proud of you. Oh. I'm proud of you. Thank you. And I'm proud of you for still standing. I'm proud of you for taking them hits, them kicks, them knocks, them letdowns. And damn if you ain't give some of your own. Of course. I'm proud of you for standing in it. You motivate me to say, no, I'm going to go get me some help, baby. So just like when you say, Monique, you poured into us, please know that you poured into me too. It's a two-way street. We pouring into each other because two black women that can sit in and have a conversation and we talking about help. Because see, there was a time you talked about taking two Tylenol and smoking a Newport bitch and <laughs> sipping you a little cup of dark liquor and taking your ass on down the stairs and go that? to bed. Right? But that? now we can openly talk so I'm just I'm proud of you sis and just keep going keep thank going you. thank you for coming I'm thank not gonna you, cry baby. today y'all gonna make me cry and that's what y'all want I'm not crying okay I'm gonna tell you something you can't keep a good bitch down baby I don't give a Period. damn how many bricks you throw <laughs> I don't care how many sticks you kick you can't keep a good bitch down. It might tumble us a little bit. It yeah. might shake us. Yeah. Oh, but we bounce back up like Jason's ass from Friday 13th. You thought you had us. I'm coming up out the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of the blueprint and coming on under construction. You're such, such a blessing. Thank you. What a gift. Thank you, my sweet baby. Whew. That was amazing. When I think of a love worth fighting for, it is not a single-handed fight. It is a two-way street, y'all. It's a love that we both find worthy of fighting for together. Now, look, I understand that I've had my share of relationship fails. God knows I have. But however, I have always held myself accountable for my actions. And at some point, no matter how much you may be in love, you should never replace self-love with relationship love. Now, let me run that by y'all again because I don't think everybody caught that thing, okay? I said, (laughs) never replace the love that you have for yourself with the love that you hope for in a relationship. Sometimes you do not have enough love for the both of y'all. It is okay to have enough love for you and bring you and your love to the table and they match that. Like, it ain't all going to be me. I ain't the only person with all the problems. Like, we both are going to have issues. We both are going to have problems because it takes two. And I know for me, I find myself making excuses for what I'm not getting in a relationship, and then I make up for it. And then I wonder why I'm empty at the end of the day. My love tank is on E. 
<laughs> That's because I done gave everything I got and you giving a quarter of a tank. That ain't fair. That ain't right. And that's not a two-way street relationship. And that's that on that. Well, y'all, it's been so good having Monique with us and taking in all those jewels she was dropping about relationships, honey. Woo! I needed that in my life. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. And y'all, guess what? That's our show for the day. I know I look forward to continuing our conversation next week on Under Construction. See you then. Bye. Under Construction is a production of Mosauce, a Stitcher brand. It's produced by Angel Lavis. Our recording engineer and sound designer is Rashad Smith. Our executive producer is T-Square. Music provided by Radio and Audio Everywhere Company. More sauce.